So, a while ago, and I mean like, a while ago, I started a series called EpiServer from Scratch. And the idea was I was going to build a website in a content management system which at the time was called EpiServer. And then, life happened, and I only managed to get one episode done, and kind of fell off the face of the earth for a while. Since then, a lot has changed. EpiServer is now known as Optimizely, and the content management system is Optimizely Content Cloud, though I frequently call it just Optimizely CMS. It's gone from version 11 to 12, and it's darn near an entire rewrite as it's moved from the full framework to .NET 5. So, a lot has changed, and a lot of what was in the previous video is just not accurate anymore. So, I thought it might be worth my time to give this From Scratch series another shot and start over but in CMS 12. So that's what we're going to do today. So to get started, we're going to need to install a couple of prereqs. These are things that you just need to do once. Uh, first of all, you're going to need some form of Microsoft SQL Server. So if you don't have it, probably just download the latest developer edition and install that. Uh, I'm not going to go through that. I'm sure you got it. Uh, the second thing you're going to need are the Optimizely CMS templates, which confusingly are named EpiServer templates. Uh, the command is simple enough, you just need to do .NET new -i. i means to install, and you're going to install the episerver.templates. So as you can see, the templates are installed, and it even gives you the names of the templates that you can use. The one we're going to be interested in today is Epi CMS Empty, uh, and what that will do is give us an episerver, excuse me, optimizely CMS site. Uh, that has basically no content, no models, no logic, just enough to basically boot the site. So the way we're going to do this is .NET new, give it the name of the template you want to use, and then I like to do dash dash name and give it the name of the project, because otherwise it will just build the project name based off of the project, of the folder you're in, and cms dash from dash scratch dot cs uh, just feels wrong. To me, so uh, I'm going to call this blend.cms12, uh, blend being the company that I work for. So, that's it. As you can see, we've got a blend.cms.csproj, we've got uh, you know the typical .NET stuff. In fact, uh, we can even do .NET build at this point, and the project will restore all the NuGet packages and build. Easy peasy. We're not quite ready to run yet though. So first we're going to need a database. Now, I say that. Technically, the site already has a database. It has a connection string to a local DB running in the app data directory. And if you're good with that, you can just skip this part. I just prefer to have my database in a SQL server somewhere where I find it easier to manage. And so for me, the first step is to create a new database. Now, Optimizely has provided a tool that can create this database for us. It's called uh, episerver.net.cli. You can install that. You can run it. It will create a database. It creates an empty database and a user, and then puts the connection string into your app settings.json. Unpopular opinion here. I don't really like that. I prefer to just do this myself uh, for a few reasons. One, I'm using a trusted connection, so I don't need a database user, and it just feels unnecessary. And two, I put the connection string in appsettings.developer.json, and then it's going to put a connection string in appsettings.json where I don't necessarily want it anyways. It's, it's really not a big deal. This is entirely down to your preference, but this is the way I prefer to do it. So uh, making the database is quite strenuous. Uh, you have to go create database and then give it a name. We've got a database. And then we need to update the connection string. So as mentioned, uh, I don't have the connection string in appsettings.json at this time, but I do have it in .development. Um, here's that connection string that was put in there for you automatically. That is for the uh, local DB. I'm just going to take that out and set data source to dot, because SQL Server is just running as a default instance on this machine, so you can just connect a dot. Um, the catalog I named blend. CMS 12, and then integrated security equals true. It's perfect because as the admin user on this machine, I have access to all the databases. I don't need a user. 
save and we're done with that step. So our next step is to actually run the site. Um, you can do this from Visual Studio at this point. Um, I'm just going to run it from the command line for now so we can see what it does. Uh, just do .NET run. You'll see some output and the important thing is now listening on localhost 5000 on HTTPS, uh, which is the default. Um, I've already opened up a browser with that URL. You're going to get a security warning because it's using a self-signed certificate. Nah, it's fine. Now it's going to take me, at least by default, to the admin registration page where we can create our admin user. Uh, let's just call it admin. And then give it a really strong password. Um, there are password rules you have to follow, so follow them. Now, once that's done, uh, you will get to a blank screen like this. Don't worry, this is uh, totally expected behavior because there is no home page, so what you're seeing is just the default 404, which is nothing. It's just giving a 404 status code and then nothing else. So what you will want to do is go to slash server slash CMS. And we're logged in. Now that the site is running, it's a good time to uh, organize your project and make your first commit. So I'm going to go ahead and shut all of this down. And I'm just going to close Visual Studio Code, and we're going to take a look at what we've got. So, now uh, I'm going to get a little opinionated again. I prefer to work in full Visual Studio. Uh, I also prefer to have my Visual Studio solution in the root of my project and any CS proj files in a subfolder of that project. And what I have right now is my CS proj folder in the root of the project. So uh, for me that's less than ideal. So I'm just going to organize this the way I prefer, but definitely organize things the way you prefer, even if you're wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and create a folder for this. I'm just kidding, by the way. It's totally fine. Um, and I call this blend.cms12. So I'm going to create a folder named after the project, grab everything but that folder, and move everything in there. Uh, you know, you could put this in an SRC directory if you want. I see that a lot. Uh, I don't really care much as much about that. Secondly, I'm going to create a new blank solution in Visual Studio. I'm going to go ahead and drop that in this folder. Annoyingly, Visual Studio is going to put it in the wrong place, but we'll call this blend.cms12 as well. I'm going to create it. I'm going to immediately close it. Uh, where'd it go? It went in here. I'm going to grab my solution file and move it up a directory. I'm also going to get rid of this .vs folder because it's in the wrong place. So now we're going to go ahead and add the project file that we generated from the command line. Uh, we're just going to add existing project and it's going to be in this subfolder and we're going to add that. Visual Studio is going to do some stuff for a bit. And we're going to rebuild. So we've got our project in Visual Studio. It builds, it runs. We've got things more or less uh, organized the way we want them to. This is the time where I like to get it into source control. I like to do it very early because it makes it very clear what's sort of just straight out of the box and what you've added. Now I know there's not a whole lot here straight out of the box. There's like two you know, significant files and then some other stuff. Uh, but in those files even, it's nice to know, you know, what did it look like when I first got it and what did I do that broke it? It's basically what I'm trying to do here. So I usually do my initial commit at this point. Uh, it's in a good state and I haven't screwed anything up yet. So, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna do git init dot. Now, one of the things that comes along with the blend.optimizely templates is a git ignore file, but it will put it in with the CS proj folder. I'm going to move it up into my root folder and go ahead and just use that file. Let's take a look at what's in that. We've got some fairly standard stuff, uh, app data, you know, some log files and stuff tend to get written there. There are also what the CMS calls blobs, which is basically uploaded media. Those go in the app dire data directory, at least locally. Uh, node modules, if you're installing stuff from NPM, 
artifacts, if you're doing publishing, a bunch of Visual Studio stuff, like really important to not commit your bin or your OBJ, your object folder, uh, that will create a nightmare in your repo. Um, license files, so if you're running the CMS on localhost, you don't need a license file, you can just run it, that's meant for local development. But if you're running through like IIS Express and you have a domain name and you're using a domain name to access the CMS, then you do need a license or you're going to see this annoying license error all the time. Uh, technically the CMS still runs, you just see an error. Now, uh, you know, if you're a partner, you can generate a partner license. If you just need to do a demo, you can generate demo licenses. There's a whole lot of that. Just, just Google EpiServer licensing. Um, and then I do appreciate the, uh, the OS crap. We got to keep the OS crap out of the repo. So it's nice to have that in there as well. And now we can go ahead and add the files for our initial commit. Okay. I like to just do a git status uh, and just double check that all the files that are listed are things I expect and want. You know, there's no, I don't know, dot thumbnail or whatever files that we need to get rid of. Everything looks good to me. And I'll go ahead and commit it. So with that, we've got a project that builds, it runs, it's in source control. We have a database, a user, and we can get into the admin. Uh, we're ready to start modeling content in the next video. Not, not today, but in, in the next video, which will hopefully come out sooner than this one did. In the meantime, thanks for your time, thanks for watching, and I hope this was helpful.